Jesus. He just did not save you so you could still stay a sinner, as in Romans 5, 8. Oh, yeah, I know there are many of you running around there. I've talked about this so much, I'm getting sick to my stomach. But it always brings back, it always comes back in my memory, and I need to talk about it till I can kill that thing. I am a sinner saved by grace. And you say that you are a believer in Christ. The devil is a liar. Because you need to understand some one thing. You need to understand some things. If you want to go literal on things, if you want to go according to your lim your limited understanding of language, and particularly the English language, then understand this. I am is present tense. Lord have mercy. And he did not save you for you to continue on in your sins. How do I know that to be so? Well, you know me. I got to go to the word because that's how I've been raised, y'all. Romans, the sixth chapter, the first verse says this. What shall we say to all this? Are we to remain in sin in order that God's grace, uh-huh, that's how we say favor and mercy may multiply and overflow. Listen what the response is. Certainly not. How can we who died to sin live in it any longer? Are you ignorant of the fact? And that don't mean stupid. It's just that you don't know. Are you ignorant of the fact that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Oh, my God. Can it get any more plainer than that? I don't want to go ahead of myself because I'm almost there with what I'm, where I'm at right now. But uh, we, we thank God. And, and, and we seek to win people over to persuade them. Like I say, how do you win people over and persuade them? Now, some people believe, and they're out there uh, operating under that belief, that you win people over by being able to show them, well, not to show them, but by utilizing a talent or ability that you have to speak. Ah, yeah, we got some talented, eloquent speakers out there. People that can stand flat-footed and, 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 and just speak words that will, oh my God, I said this once before, I believe. They can talk your drawers off you with some words. Amen. And some people believe that's how you win people over. And you know what? You have won some folks over that are either simple-minded, simple-minded, or they just, they're just saying, well, you know what? I like what you're saying because it fits my lifestyle. I don't want to do anything other than, oh, well, you know, anything that tells me that I got to be holy, I really don't want to do that. So I'm going to go along with what you're saying because I feel comfortable with what you're saying. Well, let me tell you this. How you win people and persuade them is not by what you say, it's what you do. It's how you live your life. Your life speaks more volume than your words about you. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, because your words, oh my God, your words, you can mess around there and say your words, and, and some folks are so well rehearsed in what they say, they can lie from the time that they start lying until God takes them out of here. We got some folks that are habitual liars, and every time they turn around, they spit out a lie, and they, oh my God, they so, they've been lying so long, they don't even know they're lying. That's how bad it is. That's how bad it is. But your lifestyle, that thing can't lie on you. Even when you're trying to make it live a lie, all it takes is that it, 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 on any given occasion, at some point in time, your, your lifestyle, someone will show up to indicate, wait a minute, mm -hmm. that looks like a contradiction in what they're saying. Because they've been saying this all along, but why are they doing this? Mm -hmm. For every action, there's a reaction. And that action proceeds from within, not from without. So they've been professing a lie all along because what proceeds out of man that is messed up comes from within, yeah. within them. Some folks know how to mask that thing. Okay. Some folks know how to cover it up. Some folks know how to make it appear like light when it ain't light. Oh, somebody else knows that too. That adversary. So what does that mean? Well, the Bible says that if you are you a liar, you are a liar. Um, you are uh, Jesus. Matter of fact, had occasion to talk to some people, and he says you are of your devil. You are of your devil. You are of your father, the devil, who was a liar. And how was he a liar, Jesus? From the beginning. <laughs> From the beginning. So, so if anybody is of, the, of of their father, the devil, and they are liars. They absolutely can appear to be one thing and appear not to be another. Why? Because he's conveying unto them the ability to do that. Yes. Amen. Amen. He's conveying that. That's why you have some people that are smooth talking, sweet talking. I, talk, I say, 
Oh, my God. I say what happened to Eve in the Garden of Eden. She got talked to by Billy D. Williams in that Code 45 voice. If y'all old as I am, and you remember that commercial back in the day, he come on there and say, well, I can't even emulate Billy D. Williams' voice. But you women out there my age, y'all know what I'm talking about. Uh-huh. Smooth, silk-talking Billy D. Yeah. You better watch out for them lies, but God says, I'm not looking at your lies. I'm looking at what you do. Uh-huh. And then that's how you win people. Amen. But what sort of persons we are is plainly recognized. Oh, oh, I, I, <clears throat> the word backs me up. What sort of persons we are is plainly recognized. And guess what? Thoroughly understood by God. You may fool some folks, but you cannot fool God. Why? He's on mission. He knows every single thing. The Bible says, the Bible says, the very hairs on our heads are numbered by God. And, and I've tried to make it as plain and simple as I can. Many of us have, of, a, of an age, I'm not going to, I almost said advanced age, but it don't take advanced age. He thought he was hiding, covered himself. He thought he was covering up his sin, him and, him and Eve. They fashioned fig leaves to cover, up, to cover that thing up because that, that, that took them out of that, that 25th verse, Genesis 2.25. The Bible says they were naked and not ashamed. But when they realized they had messed up, they became ashamed, so they covered themselves up. They didn't want God to see them like that. He beguiled me. God didn't even talk to the serpent. He knew him. Remember, Jesus said he was a liar from the beginning. God pronounced judgment on him. Then he took care of the man and the woman. That's why we're in the state that we're in right now. That's why we needed a Savior. That's why we needed God. We needed Jesus to come in his life. And that's why once he saved us, we need to be transformed. The Bible says this in uh, Romans, the, the 12th chapter. Amen. Starting at that first verse. Uh, uh, I'm going to read that into your hearing as well, coming from the Amplified Bible, and I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Uh, it says this, I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, and beg of you in view of all the mercies of God to make a decisive dedication of your bodies, presenting all your members and faculties as a living sacrifice. That's the beginning of change. Holy, devoted, consecrated, and well-pleasing to God, which is your reasonable rational, intelligent service and spiritual worship, to God that is, and do not be conformed to this world, this age fashioned after and adapted to its external superficial customs, uh -huh, them traditions, but be transformed, uh-oh, change right. by the entire renewal of your mind, by its new ideas and its new attitude so that you may prove for yourself what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God, even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight for you. Right. That's right. That's right. God, he, he looks at us. And he's the one that can recognize and thoroughly understand, oh, my God, and what sort of person we are is plainly recognized and thoroughly understood by God. God is always looking down upon mankind to see what we're doing. Because the yeah. devil is up there in heaven uh, uh, coming up before God, accusing us, telling, telling us before God, saying that what you did for them, you might as well not have done it. They still messed up. They still sinning. Yeah, yeah there's, there's, there's quite a few still sinning. And all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yes, they have. Yes, they have. But I'm, I'm reminded of what happened with uh, Elisha when he took on the prophet uh, of Baal. No, not Baal. Uh, he, fought, he fought some false prophets. And, 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 and Jezebel, prophets, her prophets stood on the, on the peripheral. They watched what he did to about 400 prophets. And they got message to her. And if she sent a message to him, I'm going to take you out. So he went hiding, y'all, into a cave. Oh, Lord have mercy. He went hiding. I know I've been changed. Amen. I'm not operating the same way I used to be. I'm not living that same life I used to live. Because God has brought me out of darkness into his marvelous life. We are, verse 12, we are not commending ourselves to you again. But we are providing you with an occasion and an incentive to be rightfully proud of us so that you may have a reply for those who pride themselves on surface appearance, on the virtues of they only appear to have, although their heart is devoid of them. Uh, you heard about me saying that uh, what Jesus said about people, that, that you honor me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. Uh, uh, the Apostle Paul was trying to let people know, you know what, we, we've done everything we can. We laid ourselves out before you. He's talking to this church of Corinth, and we ain't going to try to do that again. You already know what we've done and, 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 and we all we want you to do all we want you to do is to be uh, 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 oh 
my God. Uh, uh, we want to provide you with an occasion and incentive so you can do, so you can be proud of us. So in everything that we do, we want to make sure that it's exemplary to God. If it's exemplary to God, and if He's pleased with our service, then you're going to be proud of, you're going to be proud and pleased with us as well. So that you may have a reply for those who pride themselves on surface appearance. Like I said, some people, many people, they don't have no problem. They can put on the show, show and tell, just like school, yeah. just like school days. Show and tell. Um, kindergarten, they used to do a lot of show and tell. You had to come in the class or first grade and you come in the class and, and have something that you want to show and tell about it. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. 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 Many people live a life of show and tell. Amen. They, they show and tell you one thing, but their lifestyle don't match up to it at all. Matter of fact, Stevie Wonder had a song, had a video about skeletons in the closet. Uh-huh. And he was talking about how, how people, uh, uh, when they're walking around, you're looking at them on the surface, on the outside, that video, uh, uh, they were, they, yeah, sellers in the car, they was walking around, he was walking around the neighborhood looking like an upright businessman, but in the house, he was revealed. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh-huh. Uh, God don't, God, 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 God says don't, uh, who pride themselves on surface appearance, on the virtues that they only appear to have. Yeah, although their heart is devoid of them. And you know when their heart is devoid of them, when you get inside, on the, from the outside, you, they, they, it looks like they got all these vir they're virtuous. Till you get inside their house, they get into their closet, and them skeletons start coming out. Lord, have mercy. For if we are beside ourselves, mad as some say, it is for God that concerns him. Well, you know, why? what are you saying there? Well, yeah, we gonna, I'm mad. I'm absolutely mad, and anybody in Christ ought to be mad about the conduct of anybody that said they're a believer in Christ. Because if you say that you belong to Him, if, you say, if we say that we belong to Him, we ought to resemble Him. There ought not be no variance in how we look if we are believers in Christ. Right. Now, I'm not talking about our physical appearance because we all look different. We are unique individuals with our own individual distinct personalities. God made us that way. He says we are fearfully and wonderfully made. But if we are Christians, if you're born again, believers in Christ, any Christian that you come up on, you ought to be able to recognize them. Right. You ought to be able to recognize them. If you cannot recognize them, that means you've got somebody that's absolute, absolutely, in my, from my perspective, they're perpetrating a fraud. And I'm telling you this. If, if, if there's some way that God will allow me to, with love, speak to them, I will have to absolutely speak to them. Because that's a brother and sister in Christ. You don't want them falling into damnation because they, they, they're, they're, they're trying to fake the funk. Lord, have mercy. So, I'm at, so, yeah, if we are in our right mind, it is for your benefit. Amen. That's why we are sound alarm, sound the alarm ministries. We're crying loud and sparing not. Amen. It ain't just for my benefit. It's for our benefit, your benefit, that we are crying loud and sparing not. And while we're sounding the alarm. Amen. He sounded the alarm to us first. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. So that we can cry, so we can sound the alarm to others after us. Yes, Lord. For the love of Christ controls and urges and impels us. Because we are of the opinion and conviction that if one dies for all, then all die. See, it's in Christ that we live and have our very being. I can't do nothing outside of Christ. It impels me to, to speak the word of God. It impels me to try to live my life in accordance to his will. It impels me to die to sin daily. It impels me to try to live a righteous life and holy life as the word says that I can. I am impelled by God to do what he would have me to do. Just like Jesus Christ was impelled. He said, I came to do the will of my Father that sent me. Whatever he tells me to do, that's what I do. And how do I know he was in peril? Well, he had a moment. Right. He had a moment to himself as a human being. Yes, he was God incarnate. He was. Uh, 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 he took on the form of sinful flesh to die for sinful people. But that body that he was in on this earth was 100% human. Yeah. And in his flesh. On, on his, in his humanness, on the night he was arrested, he went to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray after the Last Supper. He right. took his 11 disciples with him because the 12th had, had scurried on off to, uh, to enter into that uh, unholy alignment with the chief priest to, to betray him. Right. So he took his 11, dropped.